There we go. You see, I was planning to record this video today, but uh, if you couldn't tell, it's tornado day. There's tornadoes out in the wild. So today, I'm gonna be filming a video downstairs. Rooms that you have never seen. Rooms that you would never imagine to explore. But uh, yeah, we're gonna be filming this in my piano room because that's that's legitimately the safest room I can think of in the house because I don't feel safe up here. So zombie target, come on, let's go. I fooled you all. The zombie target's already down there waiting for us. Surprise, there, there's actually two of them, and I'll explain that now. So the yellow Vulcan does not have an ammo box. The clear Vulcan has an ammo box that is stuck to the clear Vulcan. The clear Vulcan also has batteries. The yellow one does not, and I only have one chain. So this review is going to go back and forth. For the most part, I'm going to be reviewing the yellow Vulcan. I'm only going to be using the clear Vulcan for the automated firing demo and to show off what the ammo box does. For the rest, yeah, I'm going to use this. Now let's rock! Oh, but first... Tactical cat not included. Ah, uh, yes, so the Vulcan EBF-25. What a cool blaster. This was the blaster that if you had it back in middle school, you were the coolest kid on the block and you probably were the coolest kid in school. Unless there was another guy who had a Vulcan. Then you had the real competition. And, and if you had the clear one, unstoppable you you, you you just smash the whole world there's not nobody can stop you nothing nothing at all but what made this blaster so desirable why was this thing such a cool product when it came out and still a blaster that a lot of people would really like to get to this day myself included and and somehow i ended up with two of them i'm not sure how that happened but yet yeah, here it is well nostalgia aside the blaster itself is actually really interesting and cool and fun and it's the only blaster ever made that is like it. This is a one-of-the-kind thing. They never did anything like this again until they re-released it as the Havoc Fire. In fact, there's a lot of different versions of the Vulcan. There's the yellow version, the clear version, the red version, the clear green version, and then the elite version, which nobody ever remembers. And just taking a look at the design of this blaster, I mean, wow. It looks cool. I've never seen another design like this. Because of the way that it's kind of proportioned behind this sort of pistol grip style thing, it almost looks like the most Looney Tune pistol you could ever imagine. But trust me, it's not. You're gonna want two hands for this. Even though without the batteries, oh, you can hold it with one hand, although it's a slog. And when you purchase this blaster, you would get three extra things with it. Not two, not four, three. And those three things were the ammo box, which I do not have, the tripod, which I do, and the chain, which I also have. Each little attachment that this thing came with will get its own section of the review, but first, let's start off with the ergonomics. This grip is, uh, okay, I need to talk about good grips and bad grips, because this grip is, is, is stupid. Stupid. The grip itself is very, very comfortable, although it's really small. Which is surprising. I mean, it's small forwards to backwards, but it's actually pretty wide. It's kind of just like a perfect circle that you put your hand around, which is funny, but it works. The stupid part comes in when you take this trigger into account. The trigger is weird. It's almost big enough for two fingers, but at the same time, it's not. So you just end up putting one finger on it, and then your three other fingers end up being cramped when there's all this real estate space up here. I, I don't understand. But the trigger itself is actually pretty nice and reliable, even though it does jiggle side to side, which is really weird, because I've never seen any other Nerf trigger do that. But other than that, it works pretty well. As for foregrips, they give you two of them. Yeah, you're not asleep. This actually happened. The primary foregrip and the one that everyone's eyes go to is right up here. This top mounted thing which you can grab from the top and then move around as if you were using it like a Macedon. But this thing right here is also a foregrip. It has that kind of grip triangle texture that is only seen on the grip portions of blasters and it is a very comfy place to put your hand on. Smooth, filleted, no annoying spots that dig into your hands. It's a good foregrip. There's two of them. And I think this is like the only blaster ever come out where they actually put that much effort into foregrips because a lot of flagships nowadays don't even have foregrips. It's stupid. If you actually hold this blaster in combat, the grip plus either of the foregrips ends up making it super comfortable. Like this, I would run this 
all day. This is an awesome way to hold this. Or from the top, if you're gonna be using it as a heavy gunner, it works as well. I mean, they mastered ergonomics on something that looks like this, and they never did it again. Seriously, this is probably the comfiest heavy gunner blaster that I've ever seen. So how does this blaster work? Because you're seeing a bolt handle right there, but at the same time, I said that this was an automated blaster, which it is. So then why is there a bolt handle there? Well, I'll go over that in a moment. But essentially, this is a bolt action blaster. You pull the bolt back, if I can, and it advances the chain. This is a chain fed blaster and gives you a seal right there. Then you fire it and it's really quiet. It's like a ninja blaster. It's surprising how quiet this thing is. But then if it's bolt action, how do you automate it? Up, bingo. Now it would have been automated if I had batteries in it, which I don't. So, oh, invisible brother, the one we've heard so much about. Ah, there you are. I couldn't see you because of the clear paint job. However, you can see the chain in there, which means that this will actually work. So you turn it on and then you hold down the trigger. and it automatically stops when the chain is empty because that thing right up there is a safety. That is that is so much fun to watch and it is so much fun to play with and listen to. <laughs> Seriously. Now, how does the ammo box work? Well, it's, uh, it's pretty obvious. You open this and you open the box and then you put the chain in. So you're, it, this is really, really, really hard with one hand. So bear with me, but you essentially just put it back and forth like like this and except you should be doing it a bit more gracefully than me i'm i'm really struggling a lot trying to get this in and be graceful with it but yeah you put the end of it right here it's ideally designed for the chain to just go back and forth and then perfectly go straight across right there but um because i because i'm stupid it doesn't work very well also when you close this that is not coming up oh wait in all my tests, I could not get that to go back up. I don't know if this is an error or if it's actually designed to do that, but uh, interesting to note on review. Now this blaster is designed to be used with the ammo box, but it isn't mandatory. You can see right there, there's a spot where the ammo box goes in, but it's also built up to where it'll still look good if you don't have the ammo box in. And that's mainly where the tripod comes into place. You can run this just as a solo, like a, like a turret mounted thing where you would put it on a table or like on a chair or something, hide behind it, and just have a whole bunch of chains piled next to you to keep cycling through and not have to fiddle with the annoying ammo box every single time. The Vulcan looks really cool with that tripod being the first blaster to ever include it. And that tripod design only changed a little bit when the Rhinofire came around to modernize it a bit. But here's the thing, when you're looking at that, you're probably thinking, well, if the ammo box is so annoying, why would you use it? Well, that gearing system is not strong enough to lift up the entire chain. So if you are going to be using this running around and holding it manually, the ammo box is pretty much required to guarantee that you will fire. Through all my tests, using it as a bolt action and with brand new batteries in, I could not get that gear to pull up the whole chain when it was the first shot. So yeah, you need the ammo box if you're gonna be running around with it, which is all the more annoying the fact that I don't have one that goes with it. And as for the clear one, which I got mainly because it was a really good deal and it came with the ammo box and the tripod, um, I physically can't get the ammo box off. It's like, it's like glued in there, I don't know why. But just in case there's even one dingus out there who's asking, it doesn't have slam fire, but it does have three tactical rails. They were doing tactical rails all the way back in the day. It's funny because a lot of people call it the N-Strike tactical rail because it was released in the N-Strike series. I don't know why I'm saying this. Pretty much everybody who nerfs knows that. Um, it has sling attachment points on the top because because it's a heavy gun. I've run out of words. Let's get to the firing demo. So I'm going to be doing the firing demo twice. The first time I'm going to be doing it with the bolt action and then I'll use the fully automatic mode so that you can see the differences in firing, that the Vulcan is right next to this. Such performance, such wow. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. Uh, a shot got stuck in the middle, but that's just because I didn't prime it all the way. But don't worry, we'll have a second shot. All right, now we're going to do the fully automatic bit. It's amazing how much faster that is, and yet how much quieter the bolt action is. So, wow. <laughs> Put your head back down. The Nerf and Strike Vulcan EBF 25. And I'm so used to saying Elite and Elite 2.0. I'm not used to saying N Strike. What do I think of this blaster? Is it as cool as it has always been known to be? Well, yes. Yes, it is. If this blaster just shot harder, then it would probably be my favorite heavy gunner blaster. Why is that? Because I can use this for any game type anything at all. If I'm going to be running around as a heavy gunner blaster, well, it's fully automatic and has a pretty good rate of fire. If I'm going to be using it in sniper rounds or something where I have to be stealth, this bolt action is near silent. You can sneak shots effortlessly with it. And the biggest problem with chain-fed blasters nowadays is the way that chains work being so hard to do right. This is done right. The benefits of using a chain are the fact that it is not a finite shape. You can make it curve to any design you want and fit into pretty much any rig. Carrying a whole bunch of chains in a dump pouch, very doable with this. And because of the ammo box, if you were to get fast at that, doing reloads with this would be near effortless, especially because it ejects the chain at the end. And with a 25 dart capacity stock, not even counting the possibility of connecting chains together, adding more chains, or just having more chains on a rig, that's still a pretty good capacity. 25 is kind of the standard for nerf blaster capacities nowadays. I mean, look at the Ultra 1, look at the Hyperfire, 25 darts, the, the Mastodon, 24 darts. It's a good capacity, it works. And that's the general size of how big this chain is going to be. But what about the fact that this stock is still an end strike blaster and the performance is terrible? Well, I still would recommend this. And if you're asking, well, how come that's the case? I mean, they've really, they made a whole bunch of heavy gunner blasters over the world. I've already said in many videos that that's the favorite blaster. Well, here's the thing. The Vulcan is fun. It's not practical unless you modify it, but it is fun as all hell. This blaster is such a joy to use, even if you're not even doing anything with it, if you're just dry firing chains through it, it's super fun. Whether you're using the bolt action or the fully automatic, this blaster just, just gives off so much positive energy to play with. It's like, <laughs> come on, this is awesome. And so this is my recommendation. If you find a Vulcan for a reasonable price, and when I say reasonable, I'm saying $40 or less, pick it up. Just, just buy it. Don't, not a second thought, because you will enjoy this blaster, despite the performance, despite the fact that it's an end strike blaster and isn't compatible with magazines or anything, you will have fun with this. This is a fun blaster to use. And if you are a modder and you know what to do with this, whoa boy, do you have a starting platform. But here's something I never thought I would have to bring up in this video inconsistent plastic quality. Now, this yellow Vulcan right here feels amazing. It's solid. It feels like it's brand new. I mean, it looks like it's brand new. I can't believe how good condition this is in. But this clear one right here that I mainly bought for collectible purposes is not. And this was just kind of a reality check to remind me that Clear plastic is a lot more brittle than solid plastic. Cause look at this, this thing creaks like it's nobody's business. It creaks all over the place. The ammo box is literally falling apart. If I try to pull that off, that is gonna break. That's dangerous. And I worry about that when I'm playing with this, I am afraid of accidentally breaking this off and then boom, valueless. Cause that thing is stuck in there. You can't get that out. That little nub is in there for good because it's held in really tight. This is not a, much of a usable blaster. I did use the clear one for the firing demo. However, if I were to recommend a Vulcan, I would definitely recommend either the red one, the yellow one, 
or the Havoc Fire reskin. If you're going to get the clear one or the translucent green one, collectible purposes, not as a usable blaster. Because, I, I, I mean, I'm afraid to use this too much. Although it is very fun to watch the mechanism. But that's not to say that all plastic qualities are going to be bad. I mean, the yellow one is great. And if you want more proof, I got that in 2016 and have been using it in pretty much every single Nerf War since. And it's solid. No creaks, no issues. It still feels like it's brand new. So there's a demonstration. Now, obviously with other old blasters, I can't provide an Amazon link for you to get this. But I'm just saying, if you do find one, pick it up. Because I definitely think the Vulcan is worth grabbing. I mean, even if there's like little bits missing, because like this part right here, not on the clear one. I don't know what happened to it on the clear one, but it's, it's not there. So uh, yeah, but if you do find a Vulcan, especially if you find one with a tripod and with the, the godforsaken ammo box, get it. With that said, Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe if you're new, like if you enjoy. Comment down below, what is your favorite M-Strike blaster or any blasters that you'd like me to review next? And I'll see y'all next time.